Well, hello and welcome to Growing Up Alien. Um, today I'm going to share my story here, the earth part, some of the earth part section. Um, and it might resonate with a lot of our viewers who are experiencing, who have experienced something like this um, as they were growing up. And maybe just recently, now that they're adults, that some of this stuff is starting to roll into their lives in a way they hadn't expected and quite are unsure of how to handle it now. Um, so um, the reflections are so critical to put all of your pieces together. I'm going to try to do a screen share. And as, as I used to teach course. I, it's like, you taught courses on, on Zoom. It's like, yeah, you, yeah, I did. But um, now we'll see if I can get this to actually work so I can kind of, you know, hopefully add some interesting visuals to go along with what was happening um, in my life um, that makes me a contactee and what's happening now as things began to sort of escalate, I guess, or become, I would rather say become more clear um and are the the quantum entanglements become stronger so i'm going to try to scream share let's see if this works i'm sharing advanced yes yay we have some luck success um so i remember growing up um not on earth but growing up on my home planet in the pleiades called era and this is an AI of what I pretty much look like. I'm not super tall there. Most people tend to be, you know, maybe like five to eight. But for a woman, I'm about five, six. Um, I actually did bilocate to a parallel time where I met myself. And I only came up to her, you know, shoulders, a little higher than her shoulders. So I'm five, two. So I figured, no, oh, try to do the math there. <laughs> I'm not very good doing the math. Um, but this is what I look like there. And I say, I, I do remember my parents. Um, so my birth parents, actually. So it's, it's when you're a walk-in, there's, um, and, and really when you're an envoy, it's the same thing or a star seed as people call it. Um, so you're, you're born, you're actually from another planet um, and you've grown up there. And then your consciousness is removed and placed into a different vessel on earth as it is this case here so there's not a lot of difference between someone who's a walk-in and someone who's a star seed envoy so the star seed is actually placed into the body before it's born a walk-in walks into the body after birth i remember probably walking in when the around two or three when, when the earth body was around two or three. So the original consciousness that was inhabited in that body left. And I was then brought in around that age, two or three. And I remember being, I'm not going to say an adult because you have a child brain. So it's, it's almost like you're an adult trying to process through a child's mind. I could remember watching people. I could remember understanding what was going on. And I knew language and I matured fairly quickly. Um, here on, on when I when I start when I when I, when I walked in <laughs> to the body that's on this planet, um, you definitely process information really differently, I think, than other people, which is something I hadn't really noticed. Um growing up because I never asked. And when you're a kid, you just don't, you know, generally have these kind of conversations. But um, I was telepathic, obviously. I could read people's vibes and emotions and I was processing all that. I knew what was going on around me. I would spend time in other places. I wasn't always on earth. So um, sort of leaving my body was, was natural. I could see differently than I think other people because I can I can scan and see small details when I finally learned how to read, which was quite early, actually, I had photographic memory so I could remember pages and books. So when I would remember pictures or lines of text, I would actually remember where they were. I would see the images in my mind and find the sections that I needed. So 
I had almost immediate memory when I was reading things. So I never did any in school. I never did any studying or anything like that because I just didn't need to. It just was there. Um, it's almost like a download. Um, and I just assumed everybody else did that as well. So I don't, <laughs> I guess they didn't. Um, but this picture that I brought up now um, was before I joined the Envoy system. And I had spent a lot of time discussing leaving home, not only with my parents there, but with my husband. And you know him as Ika, and we're going to talk about him a little bit here today. Um, he didn't want me to go, and I said, like, and, um, and he was right, because um, I really didn't have the, <laughs> the personality that's really suited to Earth. And, um, of course he wasn't going to send me alone. He was going to join too. So he was joining the military. He would join, he joined the galactic federation of worlds. Um, yeah. And he wasn't certainly military material either. We were, we were pretty home, much homebodies, which probably call hippies here, <laughs> you know, like we're really quiet. We didn't do a lot of things. We didn't travel, you know, he would go into the city to do some service work. Um, I, I worked from home. But not not work as you would think of here. I, I worked, I was a mist, somebody would call a mystic. That's how I worked. That's what I did at home. I also would go on ships occasionally and help with rescues and, and, and healing and that kind of thing, like that. Some spiritual healing, okay? energetic healing, right? So there's no such thing as, as spiritual. I feel people use that word. That's like um, no, it's energy, right? So I would work with energy, which would be the healing process. Um but when we would need things, you know, here and there, um, Eco would go into the city and do some some things, some work. He was involved with what you would probably describe it. Um, it's something like sales or trading. That's the word, <laughs> trading. Um, and then we would get extra um, points or whatever you want to call it to, to buy things that we needed. Uh, extra things, you know. So um, again, this is just an AI and home doesn't look really like that. They, they just don't get error, right? AI. I had a hard time so far trying to get them to do error correctly. Like trying to get our house, what it looked like. Um, impossible. <laughs> I was like, no, it's very raw. It's, what's it look like? It's, it's white. It's almost like, you know, the house is in Greece. Por it's almost like porcelain, you know, it's not porcelain, but it's like porcelain. But it's all pretty much, it's very rounded in its shape. The um, inside the house, you think of like a door frame. Well, this is rounded. Um, on the first floor, we have a kitchen area. There's no refrigerator. Um, there's on the left, on the, on the left, if you're, if you're facing from the door walking in, on the left is a bedroom. Then you can go upstairs. That's where we have a meeting room. We can do holographic things like that. And there's an extra bedroom upstairs. Um, so that the house is it's not a super big house. We're not we just so you don't need that kind of stuff. Um so I'm trying to ex explain or show visually what that looks like, but um, that's the best I can do. But of course you're all invited and you can come visit my house astrally uh at any time that you wish to go. So um we live in a a meadow field area and it's surrounded by mountains, and the mountains have snow on the top, so it's kind of like I guess they call it there would be like a fjord here. And there's a water, a lake, a huge lake that sits in front of the house. Not not too far. We're not too far from the shore, but there's like a pebbly shore and then there's a water. And that's kind of fed from the, the, the melting um, snow from the mountains. And so it's quite a cold lake. But it's a nice view. And, um, you know, when I finally decided and I and I, I always say I always listen to Ika now, everything he says, I go along with <laughs> he's right <laughs> all along. I mean, Maybe you could look at this as as um, it's a way of ex expansion I, in, in a way. Uh, you know, you sort of challenge yourself in, in something that you would not have had as a challenge growing up or living your full life um, back on your home planet. So coming to Earth and experiencing these uh, soul expanding, if you want to call it that in a positive way, <laughs> um, experiences, for sure, for sure. Um yeah, I'm definitely not cut out. I'm still not cut out for this planet. It's it's very coarse to me, I guess. I don't understand competition. I don't I never did. I don't, I don't understand the way humans don't interact with each other. I don't understand the lack of of fraternity. Not that it's not there in places, but it just should be why to me it should be widespread across the globe. 
why why would you be fighting against your own species why would you be giving away your sovereignty to people who want to destroy you what yeah it's just so many layers like why do you go to work when you can just serve and everybody and it's just i don't understand like it's all about it seems like everyone's focused on such vapid shallow um unfulfilling things and and when you talk to earth humans you can just see how unfulfilled so many people feel their life is and they've um just seem to put all the pieces together to make life so difficult here when it doesn't really have to be and they've separated themselves from not only themselves but their families and like nature and it's just really strange but i don't want to get into a long conversation as to why <laughs> um this planet just doesn't float my boat um anyway so that's when i decided to, to come in here um and yeah you know, you know, i did so this one, so I remember growing up, and I remember my parents, like I said, on on era. Um, much gratitude to the to the the parents on uh, on Terra that provided this, you know, like a costume. <laughs> I've been in a Halloween costume since I was two. Um, I don't know how convincing it is. I don't think I convinced a lot of people. I, I always freaked people out my whole life. They didn't under people were really. It was just really weird, like trying to to fit in here and you never did. And everybody just knew there was something weird about you kind of thing. So that was that's something that's followed me, um, you know, till today, I suppose. <laughs> so now I embrace it. But when you're a kid and you're the weird one is. Yeah. Anyway. I remember this is kind of a a picture I, I came up with AI, um, of Ike and I growing up together, playing together. You know, we 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 lived nearby each other, and yeah, it was um, a childhood romance. What they would, I guess, right? That's what you call a child. Yeah, I mean, not only is it we're a soul split, so we've had many lifetimes together, and um, yeah, era was going to be another one where where we spend our time as husband and wife once we grew up. Um. A lot of you might recognize this guy. Uh, so I also grew up with Will. He was the same age as us. And um, yep, we were all school, not, you know, playing together, you know, that kind of thing. Um, so one of the reasons that Ika was, I, I'm gonna, he doesn't want, he doesn't want me to tell like that. He was a little jealous of Will because there was a possibility that um, I would have, you know, went with Will because I had gone with him in past lives. Um, but he didn't, I, that wasn't going to happen. And it didn't happen. Will is a wonderful person. He's a great friend of mine. And that's what we were. <laughs> so we grew up together. He grew up on era. So Will is a tall T-A-A-L Pleiadian, um, not in the hell. Um, his real name is Tyridian, which uh, Ika reminded us. Well, you know, you forget you have amnesia when you come in here. Um, so Will, and this is um, the husband of Linda, who is, of course, uh, on our channel as well. This, um, she didn't grow up with us. She's older than us. This is Semiasi from, it's from Billy Meyer fame. Um, so she would um, hang out with us too. She's still a friend of, of course, she's still a friend of mine. And I'm going to do just a special segment on Semiasi and, and how she helped me to, you know, um, find myself um, here it was just a couple of years ago where I was at a kind of a critical point because my who I was had been pretty much erased and I was just an empty shell and um, I don't know if any of uh, our viewers experienced this kind of sensation but it's like you just people ask like well, what do you like it's like I don't even know you know they're like well, you, you you see stuff when these gurus and they're all like, oh, you just got to be authentic. It's like, what does that mean? What do you, how do you be authentic when you don't know who you even are? Um, so whether or not it's a, an envoy thing or a walk-in thing, um, I think a lot of us are living sort of a split life where, you, where like there is understandings of who you really were or, or should be, but it didn't make any sense because, <laughs> you know, when, when you're, 15 years old or, or 30 years old or 20 years old or 40 or 50 and or 60 people are, are, are waking up 70 probably even later um my father was a star pleiadian starcy 
So um, you start to kind of crack your outer shell, trying to understand that, why do I have this, this link, this feeling, this, you know, I don't belong here, I'm not from this planet, all these kinds of things that are racing through your head. And because of all the brainwashing and the cult and the illusion and the lies, mostly lies, this is a planet of lies. <laughs> it's a planet of, of like how you can't end up mentally ill on this planet is a miracle because you're just gaslit everywhere you go by everyone you know, <laughs> because everybody is under the same drug, basically. Um, so Semyasi helped me to kind of feel it using telepathy helped me to kind of feel into who I was. And it began to sort of, um, I, I started, it started to make sense to me. And that was just a couple of years ago when I hit pretty much rock bottom. Um, and I want to thank her for that, for sure. But we'll bring Semyasi on in, in a separate type of um, telepathy. I'd like to have her chat with you guys. So yeah, she's lovely, by the way. Um, and she, she has a lot of friends of <laughs> my friends as well. So well, going back to when I was little, so around two years old was when, um, I'm sorry, yeah, because people, I, I was, we were talking to my friend Zoe, <laughs> something like, my hair keeps hitting my nose, I'm like, oh my God. So yeah, for those of us, for those watching who are part of the FBI, and they're like, oh, somebody's lying when they touch your nose, no, I, I have hair, as you can see, that hits my nose, and it, it you know, drives me crazy. <laughs> I have a lot of sensual problems, that's another thing, maybe those people watching, um, I'm hypersensitive to touch. Um, I can't be touched. It's like creates a lot of tension in my body. I've, I've always been super, super sensitive to anything that is um, of a sensory nature. And that's a hell actually. Um, yeah, I can't be like, I don't like being hugged or anything like that. It's just, I get, I get a lot of like information from that. And it's just really, really uncomfortable for me. And I, even when I was little, it was just, oh my God. Yeah. The idea I was just, yeah. Um, so here was just a, another AI recreation of, um, Ika and some ladies that are on the ship. Um, I used to go up when I was a toddler. Um, he used to take his wife up. As his wife, his, as I, I asked him, I said, God, your wife's in diapers. How, how bizarre is this? But he just goes with the flow. Nothing is strange to him uh, at all. He understood the process in a way that I think is hard for us to, to comprehend. But um, yeah, he was just totally cool with that, bringing me up onto the ships as a little kid. And of course, when you're a little kid, as most of you who have had experiences as a child, it's just not a big deal. You're used to it, right? So for sure, um, it didn't matter to me, but I just remembered a blonde man who was really nice and really special. And I remember, I don't know who they were. That's my hair again, just for those FBI members here. Um, yeah, there, there would be these telepath messages to me as, as, a, as a kid, um, which didn't make a whole lot of sense to you. The way they would send you information when you're little was kind of like, you don't know what they're talking about. You're like, you know, four and you're like, oh, okay. And, and, but they were very loving. I remember that. Um, and they would, I remember them always stressing the, this blonde, they would show me the blonde guy and it was a blonde man, as you know, it's Ika. And, and he would be wearing like what to me looked like medieval clothes, like a tunic. Um, and, I'm like, why are they showing me this guy from the Middle Ages? He must be a relative. I said, well, he's really nice. And I like spending time with him. And I didn't, you never, I, to be a ship was nothing. I didn't understand what that was. You know, um, it was just been going somewhere. Right. Um, but they would show me him and they would say, oh, you're going to meet this man. You're going to just see, they're like showing me, look, I'm like, okay, I'm looking. Yeah, I've met him. Yeah, he's really nice. I like him. He must be your cousin or something. And they're like, you're going to meet this man. I'm like, okay, I got it. They're like, you sure? Like, the kind of like, you got know, like, I got And they would take me on little, like, astral journeys as well um, to different planets, um, which to me didn't didn't seem like a different planet at the time. It's just, it's just a place. <laughs> you know, kids, kids, kids have so much. I think that's why we, kids on, on Earth are so um, silenced and suppressed and controlled because they understand a lot. They know a lot and they have a better understanding of reality than the fully indoctrinated adults, certainly your school teachers, your parents, all those people that have been totally and fully indoctrinated in, in all the systems, the religions and all that kind of stuff like that. Kids are free of that. Maybe that's why kids like animals so much because animals are free of that too. Um, so it was always a safe place for kids to be with animals where they could be understood and not controlled and shaped and lied to, you know? So yeah, that's, some of the fun I had as a, as a little kid. 
I'll have to mention this guy because I haven't really talked about him very much. And I know he's pretty peeved about that. And he wants to be an influencer on Earth. And I know he will. <laughs> he's great. <laughs> so here's one of my cousins on ERA. His name is Camiel. And he is, I mean, he would be like one of the four stooges. I mean, if there's the three stooges, well, here's the fourth. This guy is funny as all heck. When we're together, you know, it's really dangerous. That's all I'm going to say. We're total smart asses, you know, slapstick, you name it. Um, but I really want to spend some more time bringing him on too, because he's just the sweetest. Yeah, he's, he's young. He's well, he's getting big now. I'm actually surprised the last time I've seen him, I'm like, oh, you're getting big. <laughs> he's like, oh, of course, right? He's, he's going to be about 21 now around that. We'll be like Earth 21. Um, but he used to be this tall, skinny, cute, you know, fun young man. And now he's like turning into a man. And I'm like, wow, okay, dude. <laughs> so um, he's looking forward to it because he he likes to be, uh, well, in, in the Victorian age, he'd call a parlor ornament. And that's what he wants. That's really what he is. Um, not sure what he's going to do yet. I don't <laughs> I don't know if the, if, if the galaxy is ready for him. Um but for sure, he's a lot of fun and just just a sweet, lovely person. So, yeah, I want to bring bring him on his own special time. So just wanted to mention some of the, my friends from home um, as I build this. So um, obviously, I'm not going to tell my life story in one huge <laughs> short video on YouTube, but just to kind of I wanted to bring some of that out so folks might be able to understand um, and kind of remember, this is the time of the remembering, where you remember who you are. Um, and some of that might kind of like, you know, open up some doors. Um, I was abducted too as a child. Um, that's a different story as well. It created a lot of the trauma that I have, the CPTSD that I that I have, I'm dealing with now. Um, so that's not all of it. I mean, I, I was, well, most of it's from humans. <laughs> I'll be honest, like, is earth humans are really my biggest trauma. Um, so this image here, you're like, what the hell is this? Um, when Ika and I began to reunite for the final half of um, sort of the, the takedown mission. So for those of you who are the envoys and walk-ins here on earth, as well as angelic or shamanic and indigenous people who incarnated here during this time, you know, you're part of the, the foot soldiers, right? You're, you're, the way that they infiltrated earth was doing this by taking consciousnesses and popping them into Terran shells. That way there you would have your off planet or highly evolved, intellectually involved beings seated into great disguises. And they all, I mean, the government knows this. I'm not gonna say, it's not like it was, un <laughs> the only people who don't understand this are your regular people on the street. <laughs> That's the only ones that, they're totally unaware of anything. They <laughs> like, it's funny. I mean, it really, these people have like literally lived in a rock, under a rock their whole life. I mean, it's just mind blowing. So underneath their very noses, the sheep, I guess some people call them. I like sheep, so I don't want to use that term, um, are completely unaware of what was going on, that they were in an unbelievable war, <laughs> like a life or death war that's finally turned. <laughs> uh, well, it turned by me, really turned, really turned, I think. Um, yeah, these guys, and they're still completely oblivious. I mean, it's just like insane. And, um, it's, like, it's really funny if you think about it it's not but anyway um so this is what's going to happen i want to make a big point about this now there's the hair again guys all right i got the fbi people out there noticing um so you probably have had inklings of an energy or of a person that's either come to you in dreams, come to you during the day, or just say you just had this feeling or this knowing that there's someone that you're supposed to meet, or that there's someone that's been around you, let's just say. Not necessarily since childhood, but maybe now you're more aware of a presence. You just know, right? And it can be a man or a woman, obviously. And if you're a homosexual, it can also be that. So if you're a woman, it could be a woman. If you're a man, it could be a man. So be aware of these kinds of energies. But those who know, know that more than likely you have a handler who is an extraterrestrial, what we call extraterrestrials, right? 
I don't use those words, but you know, you something off planet person. It can be a brother or a sister that that's watching you, that's trying to connect with you. It can be a parent, your real parent from home that's watching you. It could be a friend. Whatever arrangement, this is where you have to kind of, this is what I do for people as I'm telepath for them. Not that they just, they can telepath for themselves, you know, but sometimes it's so strange or unusual for them that having validation. So basically that's what I do. I'm a validator. That's all I tell them. It's like validation. I just offer them validation for the stuff that they've already known. So when, let's say a significant other is coming forward again with their intention is to reconnect and to get you to remember that relationship that you've had off planet before you sort of semi-separated, right? I like this song by Skid Row. <laughs> I, I remember you because that really is I want to hear you say, I remember you. And that, and that's really what I get from the off planet individual, whether it's a man or a woman who trying to reconnect, they never left you. They've always been watching you, but when they're trying to reconnect with their husband or wife, there's always that little sheepishness of, are they still going to love me? Right. And it usually comes across initially when I'm talking to them, they'll come forward and we talk, we just talk briefly and I, you know, it's how you're doing, what's your name and all that kind of stuff. And then sometimes I'll feel like a lot of emotion. Usually it's like tears. Um, they do cry upstairs a lot, actually. It's they, they more than, cause they don't want you crying on earth. Cause it's like, it's a way of releasing tension and they don't want you to, re they want you to hold on to fear and tension, all negative emotions here. Cause that's what they feed off of. So, um, usually I'll feel that it'd be like, they're crying, you know, um, and then I'll relay the information to the person that is now here working as an envoy. I said, you know, this is this person. <laughs> this is what they look like. And a lot of times they already know. You're like, you already know. I'm just validating. But you already know. You just, you know. So anyway, um, Ika came back to me with this intention of reconnecting or reestablishing the husband and wife relationship that we had before I was reborn basically here, not reborn so much, I guess, because well, anyway, <laughs> grew up again because <laughs> I, I didn't come in born here. I came in sideways, but anyway. Um, so initially um, he would just spend a lot of time with me uh, very, very strongly. I could feel his presence completely. Um, I almost feel like I would bump into him, that kind of thing. So I got a sense of how big he was and in his in his energy and and all that. And he just slowly would would touch me and you know begin to reconnect that way because he knows I have sensory issues. So it's really it was initially really hard in the beginning for me to um, have him touch me because it was too much energy. Because these guys are the off planet people have a higher vibration, so they're four D. By the I mean. Not for everyone. I'm just saying if you're if you have a 4D connection. But they have a very strong like love energy. And that's just really weird. If you I've never felt anything like that from anyone on earth. I've not met every person on earth, so I can't say for sure. But I will say that every person I've worked with hasn't met that energy either. So um Slowly but surely, he desensitized me and we started to grow that way and grow and grow and grow and grow our connection. And he'd he'd sit with me in the astral when I'm driving around in my truck and doing farm work and he'd be there with me. So we slowly grow and grow and grow. He'd come with me at chores and, and I know he would be there and I could see him in my, in my, I could see him. I can see him, of course. Um, so one morning he came to me again very strongly that morning. And he showed me him like it was kind of panning. It was where like I could see him and he was sitting down and it was very, very like movie quality, super. I'm like watching. I'm like, okay. I didn't know who it was at first because the hair was a little different color. So I'm like, who's like, not sure. I'm like, oh, oh, no. Then I then finally, I'm like, oh, you dyed your hair. <laughs> so he dyed his hair like a dirty blonde. 
And I'm like, oh, I'm like, oh, okay, yeah. Well, like then I'm like, where are you? And I'm looking, and he's throwing me, and I'm like, he's and I, I see like the wind. So his hair was blowing, but weird. I'm like, why is your? Because you think the way the, the wind blows people's hair, his hair was blowing like down. And then I could see more of where he started to come in clearer and, and where he was. So he was sitting in the door of a helicopter. So I'm just looking, I'm like, this is a helicopter. You're in a helicopter. And he was wearing a uniform. Not our, not the uniforms that we wear, but the uniforms that the Earth military wears. And I had to look it up later, but it's actually Air Force. It was Air Force jumpsuit. And I, and I knew it was some kind of military. I don't know. My father was in the military, but I never paid any attention to it. I, never, I was never, never into military. Um, so I'm like, whoa. I was like, you're, do that. And the first thing I told him, I said, I telepathed him. I said, I said, do they know? I said, like, oh my God. I'm like, first, I'm just like, he's on earth. Like, you're here. You're on earth. Like, oh my God. <laughs> like, right. You know? And he's like, yeah. I'm like, uh, I, and then I was just freaking out. I'm like, are you, are you, first I'm just thinking, like, is he safe? I'm like, cause there's no, I'm like, there's no way that the military isn't going to know this guy's different. I mean, I'm just thinking, whoa, I'm like, I'm, I'm like, do they know? And he didn't answer. I'm like, do that. I'm like, oh my God. I'm like, I'm like, you're like, and I just didn't know what to say at that point. I'm like he, he's in the military. <laughs> I'm like, he's, he's in the air force. I'm like, oh, okay. Um, and he told me where he was, and I can't tell you, but I, I know where he is. Um, not always. He moves around, but the, the base is there. It's on. It's in the United States. So, like, wow. And I, I'm looking at him, like, literally movie quality, clear, and I'm just thinking. I didn't want to telepath it. <laughs> so I'm, I'm like, oh, like, he's more masculine than I remember. And then I hear, are you disappointed? And I, oh, uh, no, I'm like, no, 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 not just one. So he's more masculine. Than I remember him because he was a skinny guy when I, when we were dating. So like, we didn't work out. Let me just, now, offline people are very athletic, but there's a difference. Like, he got pretty fit. Let's just say he's now pretty fit. And a friends of mine have seen him and they're like, oh my God, he's a, he's a, he's a big guy. I'm like, I know. <laughs> so he never was like that before. Um, and that's not a problem. Not at all. The thing is, I think which makes this real is that if I was going to imagine, let's just say, a, a good looking man that I would be attracted to, I like skinny guys. I don't like guys who work out. I just like them skinny. Athletic, mind you, but skinny. So the fact that he's works out, <laughs> they have to, I mean, our, our, the off planet military, the training is very intense. Um, and I can't, I can't even, this is like not him. And I, I like, that's this, yeah, I went through hell, <laughs> um, but he went through hell. He went through like literal, like le mine was psychological hell on this planet. His was both physical and psychological. I mean, his soul expansion <laughs> is off the charts. So yeah, he has PTSD just like I have. A uh, mine's more the trauma based, emotional trauma based. So his is like, yeah, all trauma, <laughs> like all level, <laughs> all, <laughs> yeah. Um, I think as any military um, person knows, it's really difficult, um, and that's what he experienced. And I can't talk about that, and I won't be able to explain that to people very much because it's really, really traumatic for him, and he can't even tell me. Very, he'll just show me pieces of things he's seen. And I, and it's just like really hard and he's just suppressing it so he can finish what he has to do. And he will, I mean, they they have tremendous will. I mean, it really is mind blowing. So that was our awkward, you know, you expect this kind of, I guess, super romantic um, first meeting, like, and for some people it will be, as they prefer me. And it has a friend of mine. Some of my friends have had really romantic, lovely first meetings. Well, I can't say Linda and Will, their stories on this channel, Will went through hell. Um, so that, that we've already done a video on, on Linda and, and Will, and we'll do more too, um, as they enjoy time together. Right. So, um, of course this channel, I, I work with eco, this is our channel and we do this channel together and like, he's been super busy, as you know, with the, uh, uh, you know, election. <laughs> so they were working their asses off. <laughs> 
So yeah, he's going to have a little more free time and come back. It was really stressful. The time of the, yeah. Anyway, preventing this stuff from happening, let's just say. Um, there was a concerted effort. <laughs> but after, yeah, that that was kind of like, oh my God, I didn't mean to, to think that to him, saying that, you know. No, I didn't. When I said he's masculine, I didn't mean like, then I just meant it as, as an observation. I didn't mean it as a, like, <laughs> like as anything negative. Um, or, you know, and this is the one thing that every off-planet person trying to reconnect with their on-planet lover kind of toys with um are they gonna you know this is what goes through their heads you know are they gonna remember me you know are they gonna like me again you know and um if they're in a relationship because oftentimes and this was expected it wasn't I me mean, we were all trained this way um if you're now an envoy or walk in and you have um, a boyfriend, girlfriend, whatever, husband or wife on this planet, that's an earth person. And you have a husband or wife <laughs> that's a an off planet human at the same time, that was understood that would happen. Um, those people have a little bit more uh, stuff to work through, let's just say. <laughs> stuff to work through. Some people say, oh, am I cheating on my earth? husband or wife well no you're actually cheating on your off-planet husband or wife because you were married to them first <laughs> so <laughs> you're cheating on them with your human um earth human mm. anyway it, it'll be in the reconnection it'll be interesting because i think it's going to be really really hard to resist that special person who understands you in ways I have never experienced on earth. The depth of the relationship and I'll, and Eek and I are going to talk about this in sell whole separate videos because it takes, it's going to be almost a, you know, a college course to explain to you how we mm, experience love and relationships on other planets. Cause it's entirely different and Enti nothing, nothing is, is the same. The richness um, is just, I don't even, I can't, even, I'm going to have to try to find out how to put it in words anyway. Um, so our first meeting, um, realizing he's in the military, um, was a surprise to me. I'm like, Oh my God, he's in the military. You know, he's going to get killed. Number one, <laughs> I can do that. I didn't realize at the time. Cause he didn't, he didn't tell me <laughs> that, that they, the off planet men and women were actually in, they had, they were in the Alliance. I mean, I know now I'm <laughs> like, Oh my God, they're in the Alliance. So that day after um, he showed me him, you know, working for the military, the Air Force, I, I told my friend Patrick that morning, because we, we both have animals, we both, we're both farmers, and I went to pass Patrick, I said, Ika came to me this morning, he's like, oh, cool, I'm like, no, it's weird, like, he's in the military, he's like, what? I'm like, he's in the Air Force. Patrick's like, no way. I'm like, yeah. I'm like, they have to know. There's no way he's going to get himself killed. <laughs> and they're going to be like, there's an alien in the Air Force. You know, I'm just like, oh, my God, he's not safe, right? And then <laughs> it's like the way the way upstairs gives you information is so funny because I'm I'm like going, oh, my God. You know, and my friends are like, do you want to go and see him? Do you know where he is? I'm like, I know where he is. Yeah. And like, do you want to go and see him? Well, of course I do. <laughs> I'm like, no, I'm not going to go because what am I going to do? Go to an air for go to an Air Force base and like, hey, I think my extraterrestrial husband is in your. You no, know, I mean, it's absurd. And he's not using the same name anyway. <clears throat> so it's like, no, I mean, yes, of course I want to be with him. But no, I'm not. You know. Um, and at that time, Ika was trying to actually, um, commandeer a craft. I shouldn't tell me say this. I was saying, who the fuck cares? Right? He was trying to commandeer a craft to actually meet with me privately. So our relationship initially was very under the table when he first came to me. I don't think you're going to experience the same thing now because all that shit's gone. So when he first came to me, we were still in a really dangerous position here on earth. And he kept it very quiet. And it was, and it was very like under, super under the table. And the only person who knew was Patrick. And I, and I used to ask, and I'd ask, he, I said, cause he's trying to meet with me. And he's like, can you go into the woods? I'm like, I'm not going into the woods at night alone. I said, can I bring Patrick? And he says, no, and it just has to be you. So that was when we started making arrangements where like, okay, where can we meet? And I I'm just like, it's not safe. This is not a good idea. Like, how are you going to fly this shit craft? And like not get killed, blown up, shot down. I'm just like, how are you going to do this? Okay. 
And I was, it was nervous for me. I was very nervous. And and then he's like, okay, we'll go in the cemetery. I'm like, okay, I can go in the cemetery. And there were times where I was just, he would he would send me last minute, like, go to the cemetery. I'm like, okay. He's like, okay, then he couldn't do it that day. I'm like, there's people here. I'm like, how are you gonna, he, I mean, how are you going to get a craft? How are you going to do this? There was really, I don't know what he was thinking, but it was not a good idea. And it was just not going to happen. And then he was like, oh, he says, take your stallion. And Black, I had my Black Dynasty as my horse. And I did a video on that. And he's like, take Black into the cemetery like you do and take him for a walk. I'm like, okay. And we were doing that. And I'm thinking, is it really a good idea? I'm like, I don't know how, then I'm thinking his, his logistics. And here I am with a really spooky stallion and he's going to bring a craft. I'm like, Black's not going to dig this. I don't know. If, I don't know how this is going to fly. <laughs> You're bringing a horse. To, don't bring a horse to a UFO landing. I don't know. Maybe, I don't know. Anyway, we didn't do it. I'm really glad we didn't do it. Um, so it was about, I think it was a week or so. No, it was, no, it was some, no, it was. So the information that I got explaining that there were extraterrestrials in the military. <laughs> so I actually found through Michael Sala. I was, I just started under, I just started watching him and I ended up going on his website and I'm like, holy crap, this is JP, this guy called JP, who was in the military. And JP was recounting all of his experiences with, uh, he called Nordics. I'm like, oh, oh, wow. So I'm going scrolling down through JP's older stuff. And then he talked about in the Air Force, in the Special Forces, there were Nordics. And I'm like, oh, I'm like, oh. and I felt a lot better <laughs> at that point that, OK, it's not just him alone. <laughs> There's a bunch of these guys in the Air Force, fully known. OK, I'm like, thank God. And then after that, um, again, as you know, we worked through our relationship and it got deeper and stronger. And he started we are all now we're like fully spending the time together. Um, he began to show and reveal to me what he was doing as it became safer too, safer for me as it was for him to telepath. Cause it's not safe necessarily to telepath. They can read your mind too. So it's like, you know, there was ways in which he would deliver information to me as he still does now, but it's much safer to do so. So anyway, uh, that was just sort of a quick uh, run up to where we are now. And I'm sure that some of these Nordics that JP talks about that are here on earth, in different aspects, probably the Air Force more than likely, special forces, um, have wives or husbands on Earth. Because one of the main things these guys and women do is try to get to you. And the easiest way for them to get to you and to be your keeper, basically, is to join the GFW and then to get to Earth as much as fast as they can, right? Um, so Ika hasn't been on Earth that long, just the past couple of years, which is what his goal was to get here, down here. Will, who is Linda's husband, once he was able to free himself from a very dangerous, absolutely life-threatening situation, he was a refugee that made it to a GFW ship where he came on board as a refugee and offered his services so services as a engineer. And they were really happy about that because Will is very talented. So his goal not only was to survive, number one. <laughs> number one is, there, he has two number ones. One was to survive and one, the other number one is to be with Linda. <laughs> two ones. <laughs> he did it. Um, the first extraterrestrial, oh, this, I should give you some information. The first extraterrestrials that are going to be talking to you openly in the con whenever this thing happens. I don't know. Well, it's already happening, by the way. I mean, contact is now. I mean, if you want contact, it's already happening. There's not a there's not a time. I mean, this is more. I think, but what I what I'm referring to here is sort of the open contact, right? Where we find we're not well, <laughs> where Earth humans finally wake up to the idea that yeah, you're not the only ones. Which I'll do a video on that separately because it's. I mean, come on, folks. <laughs> How stupid is that? Oh God, it makes me laugh. I think all the ETs are just like Jesus Christ. We're the only ones. Like, yeah, is there any intelligent life in the universe? Yeah, there's a lot of intelligence life in the universe <laughs> off this planet. Yeah. So anyway, um, your first contact are going to be Nordics. I know. I, I just heard something the other day. Somebody's like, your first contact is going to be like hybrid grays. No. <laughs> what the? Excuse my Gaelic. Yeah. No, it's not going to be that. <laughs> it's not. Yeah, 
your first contact, as it has already been, are going to be other humanoids. Um, which is kind of, you know, unfortunate, I think, for people who have envoyed from other systems, other, other, other species, or unusual races like Arcturia and things like that. You're going to have to wait a little bit. I mean, but you're in contact with your family now anyway. But I mean, yeah, I mean, to be like fully hands on stuff. Yeah. Um, I don't know, honestly, what, when, you know, but you set the intention. We're all setting it for you guys to be with your family um, full on, full on, if that's what you want. Right. Everything is, is this is if it, this is free will that you will you will finally enter. A, you don't live in a free will world. I know Earth people think they live oh, it's a free will world. It is not a free will world. <laughs> you live under mind control. Once that's lifted, you'll get to understand what free will really means, right? Free will is beautiful, okay? And that's what's going to be uh, brought to you. I hope ASAP, anyway. Um, so that pretty much was maybe a long roundabout story about how, how I um, first reconnected with uh, my husband. So... Always much grace and gratitude for those joining us today and look forward to hearing your stories and talking with you personally, one-on-one, -on -one, um, ASAP. And you know, let's, let's, let's get this ball rolling. Let's get you on this um, channel. Let's get you sharing your story. Let's make some new friends. Let's um, get you in contact with your, your upstairs, uh, off-planet loved ones. All right. So I wish you much abundance and joy.